Today, I'm very pleased, very happy to have Jens Krauer uh, as the invitee for the dialogues, the photo collective dialogues. Um, I've been following your work, your street photography work. We're not that far. You're in Zurich, I, I believe, right now. You have also a, a link to the Bulb Collective and to the Balkan States, to Ukraine. You've been very active uh, for humanitarian reasons, too. I'll put all the links below for people to go discover your work if they don't already know it. But I, I'll go directly to the main question, which is why why, why photography? Why were you attracted to it? And why did you become a photographer? Well, I mean, I, I didn't exactly become a photographer, at least not uh, in in the classic way. So uh, I had to turn, I think it was uh, about, it's exactly, exact, actually 10 years ago that I turned to photography. So what I did is I first started with being creative in my youth. So we, we applied uh, colors to walls in cities. Nobody's been asking for it, but we did it anyway. So, and then around 30, I thought I, I need to wear a tie and make a little bit of a career, which I did at a very famous sports organization. Figured out after 10 years that wearing a tie and making a career is not my business. So I quit. A lot of people called me crazy, say, how can you leave behind such a salary? such options, uh, such a perspective. I was like, no, I want to go back to my roots. And that's actually what I did. So I re-picked up backpack, filled it with a camera instead of aerosol cans and uh, started going out. So photography came to me really just, I mean, I really did rediscovered it. When I was working for the European Football Association, I was living in Ukraine for about two years to organize the Euro 2012, the European uh, Football uh, mm -hmm. Championship. And I just started snapping pictures from my work colleagues. And through that process, I kind of figured out through feedback from other people that maybe my photography wasn't too bad. So I started looking into it and, and started working with that, did it in parallel to my job, and then quit my job in 2014, 20, 2015, excuse me, and mm -hmm. went full photography. So Photography came to me in a phase of my life where I was fed up with working for corporations, etc., and it brought me back to where I started. It's interesting because in those dialogues, for those who listen regularly, um, one important thing is this need to sometimes refocus um, their lives or refocus on more human values. And when when we look at your work, um, for me, it's very human centric in general. Um, even your street photography, it's it's really the characters it's uh, the human aspects of streets um, that comes out do you think this need to link to other humans um, was part of that uh, discovery of this art form when you when you switched i don't think so i mean i i, I see exactly what you're going for and mm -hmm. i i mean i am centered um, around human beings I don't think uh, the need was there to 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 kind of discover that again. It was just natural for me to go for that again. I have a a rich history on my own. My youth was, say, I would say, not very uh, not a very straight line. Mm -hmm. I believe I I can I went to where I can relate to people, mm -hmm. and for me, I can relate to to nearly everybody. I've been living through probably all social levels you can imagine. From sleeping myself on a bench up to sitting at the gala dinner at very famous people's houses. And when I go out, I basically just look for humans. Like I'm not distracted by money or cars or <clears throat> any superficial stuff. I'm always just looking for that human connection. And mm. I equally enjoy, uh, I don't know, for example, in Istanbul, meeting a, a, a chef that has a million dollar business by accident in, in a coffee place. And at the same time, discussing with the coffee vendor at the Galata Bridge, who been just been uh, sent out of Germany for, uh, let's say, uh, unlawful behavior. So I, I just enjoy human beings and from, from all walks of life. Again, I, I push the listeners to go check your website. There's also lots of resources where you also talk other interviews. I'm, I'm thinking about this uh, interview from April with uh, Hugh Brownstone. You were talking about concerned photography. Would you describe yourself as what you were saying? As somebody who's concerned and uses photography to bring ideas and stories to to the people, yeah, I think if they if they're centered around important subjects or humans, yes, absolutely. I, I come from the point of view where I think I mean, a picture is not necessarily supposed to be beautiful. A lot of other attributes that make a picture good for me, and it mostly has to do with depth. And so after doing years of street photography, which are always single images, even if you group them into, into a sequence, into a portfolio, those are single images. 
So to take photography and and kind of bring it to the purpose, which other people have done brilliantly, and I, I'm trying to do that too, to tell stories of things that actually matter. And mm -hmm. we're not talking about big fantasies. I'm going to change the world in my pictures, but just, you know, telling small stories that, that actually matter. And Ukraine, for me, due to a personal connection and having lived there and having friends there, it matters to me to, to, to show that. You're talking about your concern and you trying to use the tool of photography to bring your concern, your sensibility. When we look at your photographs from Ukraine as a documentary side of your of your work, you're working mainly in color. While doing your street photography, it's mainly black and white. Is there an importance regarding the temporality of things and the way you express yourself and how much impact you think it can have? Yeah, I think there's also, I mean, logical ways to, to approach this. For me in street photography, it was always... I mean, I started and one of the first things I wanted to do is to make sure that all my pictures have kind of a, a unison style, that they come like mm -hmm. from one place. So uh, that was my main main uh, objective. And, and I quickly figured out that for me, black and white, it's a little bit of an homage to, to the, the story or the history of street photography. And on top of that, I believe that uh, a picture reduced to, to shape, color and geometry shows core values or core qualities of an image. So I applied that to my street photography. Now going documentary, I actually believe color makes sense. Because if I want to tell you the story of a place, I think it's important for you to get a, a different feeling for it that what than what I'm trying to say in street photography. And there, the color to me actually adds a lot of value. It allows mm -hmm. you to really get an image by yourself where this is happening and how it looks and how it feels. You went to Ukraine since the, the conflict, both phases of the conflict uh, came by. You also used uh, the fact of going there, the process, to help the people there, to, to bring some uh, equipment or some food or some, some clothing and bring some people back. How do you see the impact of your work in general, not only the picture, as changing the situation of uh, individuals and hardship environments? Honestly, I'm not, I'm not really sure if there's a direct impact. I mean... There's a few real-world uh, considerations to take. The, the pictures coming from Ukraine are numerous, and I support that. I think it's important to talk about it. And, but it's also impossible for the viewer to, to note all the stories coming out of Ukraine. So I think we should not overestimate our impact. But then again, in numbers, we do transport a feeling. We do transport a message that is, that is important. And I also believe that, especially in situations of war, I think we, we're getting a little bit used uh, to things. So reading or seeing war on the news doesn't touch us too much, us as very comfortable first world people. Mm -hmm. We even allow ourselves to say at some point in time, we're a bit annoyed by hearing about this every day. And I believe there's people who don't, oh, I don't believe, I know there's people who don't have that choice. And if you want to make things approachable again in, in such environments, I believe you should make them very personal. We, we rarely react to the message of uh, 50 mortars dropping into a village, we note it. But then when we have a face, we have a name, we have a story, we tend to be more emp empathetic. And maybe I could add a little bit to that, but I make no, I have no illusions on, on changing these things on a grand scheme. We just tell stories about it. One important thing, I think, is what you're saying about empathy. I think that's uh, that's something I, I find very strong in, in your overall work and, and what you show of your philosophy. In that sense, you, you give workshops, mm. you're a trainer. Do you think when you train someone, do you believe that's also part of what you've said before? You're trying to transmit the tools for others to reflect on reality and, and the human side of reality? Yes. I mean, when I say, I mean, I say a picture cannot just be beautiful. That's, that's kind of what I mean. It needs to have a deeper meaning. And we don't talk like, I don't know, big uh, poetic kind of things. It needs to have a deeper meaning to yourself and to the people that you photograph. I think that in itself gives value uh, to photography. I'm not so sure if you're aware of uh, Ara Güler, famous uh, mm. Turkish photographer. And he said that that it, in absence of a human being, it's just a postcard. So, mm. And I kind of go that route. And I'm also convinced, that, and I say this in all the workshops, I say, you know, you can do that too. Like if you find something, a subject matter or a person that you are truthfully feel connected with or burn for uh, from a motivation point of view, you can tell small stories with huge impact. I think the big stories are rather close to you than you going out in the world and looking for them. I'm sure the answer is yes. But you said you were looking for more freedom and more 
more truthfulness to the, what you were doing. Um, did it did it work out? To a degree, yes. I mean, it makes me happy. I mean, I, if I go uh, two months to New York and I go every day seven in the morning to twelve o'clock at night, or I go three months to Istanbul, I do the same thing. Yes, it does make me happy. And by by going out and and encountering so many different people of so many different walks of life, I mean, if you're open to sit down with whoever and have a glass of chai somewhere and just listen to who they are and what they do, I mean, it's so enriching in general. So I'm 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 grateful for the journey, and I think this is what maybe changed my life to a degree that I can just walk into any place and I'd be like, hey, I'm here. Like, can we talk? Or you want me mm -hmm. to take a picture? That that's really just gives me a lot of freedom. Do you think that's also what you wish your students will gain when you try to transmit your art? To a degree, yes. I, I wish, really truthfully wish that 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 all of them uh, find something they want to photograph that they either love or want to talk about. I think the depth in photography comes from the depth of connection to the subject. Um, going a, a little bit technical, um, you do work with recent and, and modern equipment. Um, yeah. How do you see the impact of that equipment on your art? Um, do you think uh, film photography has a place uh, in your process? Or don't you really care uh, about what kind of material you have as long as it reflects the view of the world you have? I think everything you say is plus or minus correct. I, I, I'm, I don't think equipment is, is a key factor in delivering a good image. But then it is a key factor in delivering a good image. So mm -hmm. there's no plain answer to this. I mean, I'm I'm a partner with Fujifilm, and I, I I've been this since a year after I started photography. So um, it's not that I've been looking for the best commercial option. It's more that I'm like, okay, that's my tool, mm -hmm. and as such, I love it. I give it a high importance, uh, and and then I forget about it. And that's the best quality it can have. So once I go out, and I start looking for pictures. The thing that I, I like to pay attention to completely disappears. It just works. And I think that is the best quality that a camera can have. I'm equally not very romantic when it comes to like film and old lenses and stuff like that. I'm really just like, I want to get that picture. I want to get to the point. And, and I respect that. I mean, I see people do amazing stuff with, with, with vintage lenses, with film. It's just not me. Like, I want to take the picture and then I want to go home and continue taking pictures, you know? Yeah. And, Yeah, it's, it's it's very interesting because I, I think that's that's one of the magics of photography in general is everyone has its way of doing it and as long as it works. Yeah. Whatever way you go, it's okay. I say that a lot also in in presentations and workshops. I say, look, nobody walks into an exhibition and says those three pictures are taken with a Leica, mm -hmm. those four pictures are taken at a 100 ISO, those five pictures have been manually exposed. I just respect the results. And if people make good pictures, no matter how you do it, what your philosophy is, I love it. How do you see today the advent of AI, generative imaging, and the relationship to the reality of the facts shown by a picture? Do you think that strongly transforms the way we see things in the world? I don't think so. I mean, yes and no. I don't think there's an easy answer. And I also have to watch out not to be a little bit salty about the whole AI thing. Not from a technical point of view. I don't feel threatened at all by AI. I think creativity still is a, is, a, is a human trademark at the end of the day. AI just processes information. The more information it has, the more information it can mix up at the end of the day. But, I mean, there's people doing amazing stuff with AI that really blows me away from a visual point of view. But then again, in the photography community, I mean, if your pictures have been lifeless before, they are still lifeless. They're just generated by an AI. There's no difference because it comes mm -hmm. from your head. And if you yourself are not able to produce these ideas, then AI making your simple ideas look fancy makes no difference in the core of the delivery. So I sometimes really wonder, I mean, why do you do the same stereotypical images that you try to make now we, with AI? And, and why are we celebrating that? Mm -hmm. It's a machine mashing together stuff. On the other hand, AI is, is a good thing. I think we should always embrace technology. And there's a uh, hundred ways how AI can help us in everyday life. I'm not sure if it's going to replace the photographer. It is in certain areas. I mean, if you're a product photographer, photographer AI is competition. If you are a commercial photographer, AI is competition. But if you walk in the area of artistic work, documentary work, go in places dealing with reality, I don't think AI is a threat at all.
I, I kind of agree, and I'm happy to hear that from you because it kind of reassures me too. I wanted to ask you a small last question, maybe to conclude. Do you have a project right now that you would like to talk about or something you've seen recently? Well, I mean, uh, let me talk. I mean, let's get myself out of the picture first. So I'm currently uh, working on a book, which is going to be published by, by a, a, a renowned uh, a publisher. I'm very happy about that. I'm going to continue my street work, which is a daily grind uh, going forward as long as I can. And uh, I'm also planning to go back to Ukraine on one hand to visit the people again I saw before. And on the other hand, also to offer a free workshop for uh, Ukrainian kids. Because I think for them, it's particularly important to to document their life from their perspective and, and make it personal and make it matter. And otherwise... um. Yeah, I'm always happy to see good photography. So I'm never planning too much. I mean, if you live that lifestyle, you usually go two, three months ahead and then uh, we'll see what develops. Awesome. Um, we have the links below. Uh, so I really recommend people to go check your work and, and follow you. And I'm looking forward to see your future projects uh, go on, the current ones too. Thank you again for, for the dialogue. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.